In this video, I'll cover some of the basics for naming alkanes and cycloalkanes. I'll provide numerous examples throughout the video. I encourage you to read some information either from your book about naming alkanes and cycloalkanes or looking at the information provided here in OWL version 2. Um, you could find this information in the preparation section of some of the assignments in Chapter 11 Mastery. I encourage you to read through this before you continue watching this video or watch the video and then go back and read this information. Here is an alkane. We know this is an alkane because all of the carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds. Again, this is carbon to carbon and they're all single bonds. We see that there are six carbons connected in what they call a chain. And the longest chain of consecutive carbons here is six. There are no branches, so this is a hexane molecule. So the name of this compound is hexane. Here I show the Lewis structure and below that the line angle diagram. Just as a reminder, the line angle diagram maps out as follows. On the end here there's a carbon, the first carbon, there's a second carbon, there's the third, there's the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. The hydrogens are not shown and the H's are not shown and the C's are not shown and remember that the end of a line segment is a carbon atom. In this alkane, discover that the longest carbon to carbon chain is five. One, two, three, four, five. Inspect another direction. One, two, three, four, five. And also investigate this part here. One, two, three, four. So if the longest consecutive chain of carbons is five, this is a pentane molecule, and it has a side chain right here. This is a methyl side chain. So to approach the name of this compound, the base name is pentane. This is a methyl branch and it is on carbon number three. Why is it on carbon number three? Well, let's count the carbons in the chain, the longest chain. One, two, three, coming from the right end. And coming from the left end, one, two, three. Well, it, it's the same number. So this is three methyl pentane. And below the Lewis structure is the line angle diagram. It's one, two, three, four, five carbons with the methyl group. This molecule is also a pentane. See that the longest consecutive chain of carbons is five. One, two, three, four, five with a methyl branch. Now I car I counted from the right end, which is fine. That established that there was five carbons in the longest chain. Could also count them like this. One, two, three, four, five. So either way you look at this, there's still five carbons in a chain. I'll remind you that on paper, the chain doesn't have to be literally straight. It doesn't have to be literally straight like a pencil. As long as there is a longest chain of consecutive carbons, it could be sort of bent on the paper, which is fine. Um, it needs to be the longest chain. Remember, a physical chain could slither around and move. Um, just think of these Lewis structures as one snapshot of a thousand ways a molecule can be positioned. 
So we notice that there's a methyl branch, but I wanted to point out that according to the rules for naming alkanes, I should start the numbering from the left side in this particular case. Not always, but in this particular case, I'm going to start the numbering from the left side. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or I could name it, or I could count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Either way, the point is that there's a methyl group, however you want to start your counting, whichever carbon you want to choose, but there's a methyl group on carbon number 2. So the name of this compound is 2-methylpentane. And below I have shown the line angle diagram. And so maybe this line angle diagram gives you a better idea of, well, you could either start counting one from here at this carbon or start counting one from this carbon and consider either one of these a branch if you consider counting one from the other carbon. I turn the molecule around, or I flip it over, so to speak. So you can see that we're still naming it 2-methylpentane, and now we're just going to start the counting, at least on, on paper, from the right side. Why the right side? Because according to the rules, we need to give the branches, the methyl branch in this case, the lowest assignment number. This molecule has four carbons in the longest chain. As I pointed out with the member scheme above, you could count it as 1, 2, 3, 4. And these two methyl groups, the ones in the top and the bottom of the drawing, would be the two branches, and they're both bonded to the second carbon, or carbon number 2. Therefore, we're going to name this as 2,2-dimethylbutane. So it's a butane because there's four carbons in the longest chain, and the branches are put before the parent name. In this case, the two branches are methyl groups, and there's two of them, so we use di, and they're both located on carbon number two. You could count the carbons as follows. One, two, three, four. And these two methyl groups would behave as the branches. Or you could count it as 1, 2, 3, 4. Looking at the line angle diagram, you might see those options a little bit more clearly. I flipped over the molecule so you could see that now we're numbering the molecule on paper from right to left, before we were numbering it from left to right consecutively. Here is a symmetrical molecule, 2,3-dimethylbutane. Now notice I wrote the numbering scheme backwards. So we could start counting from the right end, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4, and discover that the longest consecutive chain of carbons is 4. Or we could count it from the left end, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3, 4. Either way, you choose to count the carbons and discover the longest chain, you'll realize that there are two methyl branches off that main chain. And those methyl branches are at locations 2, or carbon 2, and carbon 3. So we name this 2,3-dimethyl, for the two methyl groups, butane, because the parent chain is a butane. Taking another look at these molecules, you may discover that the molecular formula for all of these are the same, C6H14. So these are 
structural isomers of C6H14. Let's see how this compound here is named. Let's count the carbons from the longest chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's going to be a heptane. And I'm going to look at it horizontally, straight across. And I see that there are two substituents, a methyl and an ethyl. And they're both equidistant from either end of the chain. So I could count one, two, three, or one, two, three. But when you have a situation where two substituents are equidistant from either end of the chain, you choose to start the numbering from the substituent with the name that has the letter that comes earlier in the alphabet. So ethyl, E, comes before methyl, N. So we start the numbering here. One, two, three, ethyl, four, five, methyl, heptane. So examining the name, heptane's the root name, if you will, the longest chain. We have a 5-methyl, and we have a 3-ethyl. Ethyl in the 3-position, methyl in the 5-position. And let's take a look at this compound. And let's count the carbons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 6, or 6. One, two, three, four, five. Well, that's too short. So we have a choice. We can look at hexane straight across, or hexane like this, or like that. I'm going to choose to look at it straight across. Now I can start my numbering from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or I can start it from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I start it from the left side, I start numbering my substituents sooner. And what do I mean by that is if we start numbering from this side, one, two, three, the ethyl gets labeled three ethyl. And these methyls will be labeled five methyl or five five dimethyl. So if we start from this side, one, two, 2 comes before 3, so we're going to start naming it from this side, or numbering from this side. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have substituents at the 2 position and the 4 position, rather than substituents at the 3 position and the 5 position. Okay, so 2, 2, dimethyl, and we have a 4, ethyl. Now, why is the ethyl coming before the dimethyl? Say, well, D comes before E in the alphabet. Well, when naming and using the di and the tri, we ignore that. And so we just look at the name of the substituent, methyl and ethyl. So E comes before M. So the 4-ethyl comes first in the name.